So let's discuss the final technique for risk analysis. See, all the techniques that we have used till now know where we have been able to quantify the risk. You know, that has been the limitation of all the techniques that we have seen. Quantification is not becoming possible. For example, when we were doing sensitivity analysis, I come to know that to which factor the acceptability of the project is most sensitive to. I can find out which is the critical factor which is contributing to my risk. When I do scenario analysis, I am able to build worst case possibilities, best case possibilities and most likely possibilities. Even when I do probability analysis, I am simply able to work out whether the expected cash flow will be on a higher side or on the lower side. Everywhere I am in a position only to analyze risk from a behavioral viewpoint. By behavioral viewpoint means, I can say this project has higher risk. I can say that no, this project has lower risk. But when someone is asking me how much risk is there, I have no answer. Exact quantification of risk is not becoming possible, which is now going to be done. We are going to use the statistical techniques of standard deviation, variance, and coefficient of variation to work out what shall be the quantification of risk. Finally, I will be able to say that, yes, this is the risk that I am undertaking. So that is what will happen now in this final technique of risk analysis. If you see a little bit of write-up, that's the same thing that we are discussing over here, that risk has still not been quantified, right? You have still not be able, able to quantify the risk. If you are saying risk is there, how much? What can be the fluctuation on the upper side or on the lower side? I don't have answers for the same, right? Similarly, if there are two projects given, I can simply say this has higher risk, this has lower risk. Mathematically, I am not able to justify the same. All these things will now become possible thanks to statistics. So, I will like to write in, I will really wish that in your notebooks you say standard deviation, coefficient of variation, or in your notebooks, alternatively what you can do in your notebooks is, you can give the heading quantification of risk. Yes, that will be a better term. Quantification of risk. We will see the statistical formula that how the quantification of risk can be carried out. Yes. Quantification of risk. We say variance about expected net cash flow. We will describe every term. Variance about expected net cash flow. See, our formula will be sigma square equals to summation of net cash flow minus expected net cash flow square that and multiply that by the probability okay next standard deviation about expected net cash flow. Standard deviation about expected net cash flow. If you want to calculate the standard deviation, you will say sigma equals to summation of net cash flow minus expected net cash flow whole square into the probability and take its square root 
okay the square root will give you the standard deviation will say where this is net cash flow this is expected net cash flow this is probability okay we are describing the terms You can write it down in your notebooks. If you are taking the square root, you will get the standard deviation. If you are not taking the square root, you will get the variance. You know, in statistics, variance means the square of the standard deviation or standard deviation means the square root of the variance. Okay. We also have something known as coefficient of variation, popularly known as the CV. Okay, coefficient of variation, popularly known as the CV. Now, what is this CV? Yes. Now, when you calculate standard deviation, standard deviation is an absolute term. So, you know what happens is we are not in a position to compare the standard deviation of two projects. It's quite possible that the standard deviation of one project is higher, but it might also be giving you higher return. So, we have to balance between the risk and return and that risk return balancing is done by coefficient of variation. So, for example, let us say two projects are given and they are asking you that you work out the NPV of this project. They're asking you, you work out the standard deviation of this project and then they are asking you which project is better. Now, you cannot answer this question on the basis of standard deviation because standard deviation is an absolute measure. So, it is not comparable. We require a relative measure of risk and coefficient of variation is a relative measure of risk. So we say standard deviation is we'll say standard deviation is an absolute measure of risk absolute measure of risk full stop hence hence standard deviation standard deviation of one project standard deviation of one project cannot be compared cannot be compared with standard deviation of with standard deviation of another project okay i am not in a position to compare the two standard deviations so we say so comma a relative measure of risk a relative measure of risk is required. A relative measure of risk is required. So we say CV, coefficient of variation. Okay, CV is equal to risk divided by the return 
whatever is the risk you divide that by the return that is standard deviation okay that is standard deviation just a second that is standard deviation is divided by is divided by expected net cash flow or expected net present value return will be calculated in form of cash flow or the return will be calculated in terms of npv right so standard deviation should be divided by the expected net cash flow or the expected net present value this is what will give you the stun uh, sorry this is what will give you the coefficient of variation if you closely look into the formula of cv you are taking risk and dividing it by the return so this will basically tell you that for every one rupee of return how much risk you are taking tell me for every one rupee of return will you like to take higher risk or will you like to take lower risk for one rupee of return will you like your risk to be higher or risk to be lower obviously i will like my risk to be lower isn't it so this is what cv does we can say cv measures cv measures risk undertaken risk undertaken for every 1 rupee of return right for every 1 rupee of return how much risk we are taking understand one thing lower the cv more desirable is the project as simple as this i will like my cv to be as low as possible so lower the cv the more desirable is the project 